Hi, Matt and Paul. Hiya. How's it going? <laughs> so you're about to play your set at the Red Lion. Yes. So what's your band called? Holiday. Holiday. <laughs> we'll, we'll think about that. Yeah. Um, what type of music is it? Pop punk. Mm -hmm. and a punk. In the 90s sort of style. <laughs> <laughs> what type of messages do you have in your music? Um, well, I guess bands that we've been in, I mean, it comes from sort of like an anarchist perspective, but bands that we've been in in the past have kind of been like directly sort of challenging um, and explicitly singing about organising, etc. But Holiday's more kind of challenging, like looking at it from an ironic perspective, like the, the way that we've found ourselves in the 21st century and everything is just like a little bit mad, weird, and bizarre, like the things and the practices that we have and do. Um, so I guess it's like bringing like an element of like, co like comedy into this, like a new sort of analysis to kind of... Instead of shouting about it. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Like less, you know. A little personal politics as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like that, how you feel in yourself. Yeah. Mm. You don't feel good in yourself, it's hard to try and positively. Yeah, because I guess you can, like, when you're looking out, which you can attack a system or whatever for the, like, restrictions and the limits that puts on you. But there's also, like, mental prisons that you kind of build up. Um, so it's a lot about that, which is kind of, like, sometimes I felt like it's fallen a bit short. I mean, bands like Culture Shock do it quite a bit, you know, talking about, like, the person as a political thing, like, mm. internal struggles, stuff like that. Do you think music is a good way to get people to think about their internal struggles and how to challenge society? For me, de like, well, going and going off myself, yeah, definitely. Like a lot of the politics I've learned to be from music, I reckon, over the years, uh, some certain bands have really got into a change. I've heard something that's completely changed my mindset, really. So it's, for, for me personally, yeah, it's like how I learned a lot of, a lot of politics from my youth. Like it's sort of music I listen to, it sort of came through music, really. Yeah. And later on, look into it and read and whatever, but. Yeah, so, yeah, music is a massive sort of part of it. And it's good, it makes people happy, and if people are happy, like, sort of enjoy it, and they're more inclined to listen, because someone just sort of talking at you, and just sort of, I don't know, let's see if it, you want, because, yeah. like the other bands, especially like one of my other bands, it's a lot more sort of faster and shouty, so sometimes it can feel like it is just sort of shouting at a brick wall, brick wall sort of thing, rather than sort of trying to, I don't know, I like, sort of communicate to people in a yeah. more of a sort of friendly manner. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But still have the point of like we're still keep the politics, but Yeah, I guess music's massively important in terms of like even like having like events like this, like gigs, it's a bit of a community, especially in put in the punk scene because this can kind of pop up anywhere. And it's like something that a lot of scene or a lot of other scenes sort of don't have. It's like a community that can like you might get one pub that sort of closes down, but like the, those same people will pop up at another mm. venue where gigs are organised. It's like a but this is this, the case for like definitely across like England and like Europe and in fact worldwide, like this this DIY thing. And it's held together by certain politics. What, was, what are your values? What do you think? Like community is massive. Like, mm. I think that's one of the biggest because around communities, you can't. It's, it's a struggle when you're in, especially if you can't keep your own yourself sort of happy or yourself yeah. in yourself sort of thing. So community is massive. Like, like we'll say, like especially like mainland Europe, sort of amount of like social centres and gathering spaces where it's not just gigs as well as be like people do food or donations and mm. bookshops and you know things where people just go sit and play pool or whatever and just sort of meet people and stuff. And uh, for me, yeah, community is. So if you guys would like the presidents for the day, like, oh, <laughs> would you? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, like, it's like a, I mean, it's a hell of a responsibility, like, it, attempting or right like, thinking that you can know what's best mm. for everybody. It's like, we're living like diverse. Everybody, everybody's different. Yeah. You look at the way a house operates. Sometimes it's difficult to get like uh, a consensus on how to do things in a, in, a, in a single house. Never mind a whole country or a whole county or whatever. It's like people should be trusted to work things out for themselves. Um, 
and like a basic underlying thing to that would be like no hierarchies uh, and a basic respect for each other. Mm. Do you think people naturally respect and love each other? Uh, deep down, I think they do. I, 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 well, a year ago, I said, not, I do honestly believe we're doing this, but it's just, it's hard. It could be like the way you grew up or your friendship group or the school you went to. Things can change the way, and growing up, you're quite vulnerable to information and the way you see things, your outlook. And mm. It's all like it was on a news the other day, like uh, MP was going around to some schools and like, just, like a six year old kid said he's very new kid because, and all this stuff. So like, I want the foreigners out. And he was like, oh, but why? He was like, uh, well, you know. Uh, and didn't have an answer because <laughs> he's a six year old kid. He's in school yeah. with finger painting or like trying to learn to write. And like, you could have so many influences from such like, a young age. It's sort of like, it's so varied, but I do believe it as a like, human being, it's in everyone to do that. And, and it works in places that it's not like it doesn't happen. It's working. It's just. It's quite hard under a system that's so solid and set, it's been set for so long and the way people's outlooks and the way people live and the way people are forced to live, like, a lot of people haven't got anything and there's no way out of that and it's sort of, it's hard to think positively or want to regroup or do, change anything positively when you're down and, or you like, there's so many circumstantial things but I think as a, as a species, I think humans, yeah, do love each other, do have compassion and love and yeah, I don't think anybody ever does anything that they think is wrong, if you know what I mean, unless you like hold your hands up and go, oh, I was wrong to do mm. that, you know what I mean? But you know, obviously that we're all capable of error. But like, I think like love is something that, we, that every action, the base of every action is love. Um, and that just gets kind of misguided and confused because if you look at the media that we've got available, it doesn't quite tell the whole story or the whole picture and points blame in various different directions. We're kind of like mixed up in, in, and caught up in, in between that. We end up adopting like strange values and beliefs and like, you know, installing belief in whether it be political parties or people with mad ideas. We, we, we install our faith in them to sort things out and it's, uh, that's very problematic. So you have faith that people can self-govern themselves? Yeah, I oh, fully. Like, it, it, might, it might take a long time. Really. Like, no, obviously, if everything that was the way it was to change now, there will be a lot of problems, but there's problems now. It's just yeah. re-sorting re them out for ourselves. And communities built on like trust and mutual aid, compassion, all of that. Just, so even like, if sort of, some of the people just, like, in my life, say, for example, like people have done some really horrible things to me. I know they love, and I know their family they love, and I know there's in them. This is not like it's a thing that they don't have. Mm. But it, it can be very misguided, misconstrued, and sort of can always like, turn into anger, can't it? I suppose, and sort of when and sort of go the other way, and sort of be something like something that it's even really hate, but really kind of like boils down to love, I suppose. And the, that's the maybe one of the strongest emotions. I don't know, one of the sort of things that can yeah, just, just like build up, whether it's for the better or worse, but it's sort of through caring, and sort of love. And, yeah. So how do you think we can build a connection between loving humans and animals? So people like think about the food they eat. It's got it's got a lot to do with the way that we like see animals and like the broad category that is animals and perhaps not recognizing that fundamentally we are animals and part of like this whole functioning earth. Um, but if you label something like uh, animals then it, it so, and even the notion of like animal rights, it tells you like a certain way that you can then treat these animals, these others, these things, which is like similar tactics. This is going to sound a bit like hard line possibly, but like similar tactics to what have been used by like ruthless dictators in order to um, justify genocide of certain mm. people. Do you know what I mean? It's like um, you classify them as like other or something, then that enables you to kind of open them up to well, killing them. Um, so yeah, it's got a lot to do with like the way that we see, the way that we actually see animals. Uh, I mean, I didn't, I can remember like a friend at school who was like vegetarian and like when, we, when I was sort of like 12, 13, 14, like we can, I can remember like all of us saying like, oh, what do we eat for Christmas dinner? Like nut roast and like just having this really like sort of like 
narrow idea <coughs> of like what it was and thinking it was really weird like like oh, what, what do you even eat like nuts and seeds mm. and stuff and it was like it was like like bullying it was a friend of his but it was almost like a bullying thing um, but that was just a lack of understanding on my part and my friend's part um, but then what happened a few years later I just kind of like, suddenly had a realisation like just shit like a, I've got like a cat at home who was like pretty much my like you know my best mate growing up like um, and like it taught me a lot about um, animals and I thought well if, if that's an animal that I love and show compassion to then like I can open that up to the rest of like this uh, And the way it's all sort of like the way it's all like in a way like labelled and it's even like you go to supermarkets or magazines or TV, it's sort of sort of like say it's kind of like you go to the supermarket and there'll be like a section where you can like it. And really, we like exactly the same as what anyone else is eating, barring obviously the animal side of it. But it's like people have that attitude of like, well, what do you eat? It's like, well, exactly the same as you do. Mm. Well, the, the sort of yeah. everything like it's like this, I think like this industry has sort of driven it to a point where it's just become the norm to do that it's like thousands of years ago we weren't like our, the, our babies were breastfeeding of mothers not cows to like say like it's like the hormones there's, there's, there's loads of sides of it so people end up often getting muddled <laughs> but that's the other side of it it's not even like i don't feel it's like it's sort of meant for our body if you like it's like like say for example cow was meant to make a calf like some big mm. yeah, it's cow it's a, it's a, it's a computer yeah it's like so like, like say why well, a baby has like breast milk because it's body built it for that yeah. being that's come out of your come, part of you sort of thing and it's all it doesn't make sense and it's sort of to start doing that and just build an industry out of it it's just like it just doesn't really make any sense because it's not it's just sort of completely unnecessary it's not really it's not needed it's not like good for you it's just sort of a thing that's happening because of industry because it's probably tasty well there's no like tonight there's a lot of things that taste good that's obviously why people like it like people say, i can never give up cheese it's like all like a it tastes great, but the actual like fundamentals behind it all sort of. I think industries has completely just sort of driven it to this point where so I don't know how you could turn it around. It is. Yeah, I guess I guess the, it, it's it's industry, isn't it? Because I mean, like, is there like somebody that's like hunting in like in order to survive? You know, like when you're faced with the prospect where like you need to like survive. It maybe it kind of could be justified at yeah, some yeah, level. Yeah. Or like there's certain people that are like have practices where like meat is kind of a, a part of their diet. Um, but the animal there's like a respect for the mm. thing that they eat. Um, but I think alongside industry it's just like this That it is, that it's a life, isn't it? That's, it's, that's the thing. So like, I remember, like, kids saying to me, when I was like, first went vegan. He was just like, so like, what would you do for like, you're stranded on a desert island with nothing but a fishing rod? So like, well, I'd fish. fish <laughs> like, clearly, if it's like a matter of survival, of course. It's not. We've got everything we need on this earth to complete without harming anyone, harming anything. Things that probably could be a very good friend. It could be like, could like sort of like because we've domesticated cats and dogs, people see mm. them as pets. But there's no reason why it's like. And like it's just, it's just like the creatures, aren't they? They've like uh, so a few people have someone said to me in the past, oh yeah, but like like sort of chopping down plants and like eating them. It's like oh well, yeah, all right, yeah, like that grows. That's died. It was like all right, if I'm doing it on a matter of uh, like sort of destruction. They don't have a nervous system, so uh, then <laughs> so they're not gonna like you know feel pain or whatever. It's just trying to li like what is it with the flux always saying was it strive to survive causing the least harm possible. Mm. I mean that's like, so, so saying like it's wicked. So it's like we don't need to cause harm. So reason to do it like it's not like there's complete alternatives to everything and there has been since the beginning of the time before cows were getting milked by humans people were living off the land and living like healthily completely yeah. banned like lifestyle and stuff and it's just sort of uh, yeah it's just again I suppose I don't know it's the way people, people sort of use it just because the way things are so it's so much to it anyway whether it's like financial whether it's sustainability whether it's like cruelty it's like like a whirlpool of things. Like the most important thing is like the like being vegan, vegetarian is that you do it for like the right reason and it shouldn't be like a struggle. Like it shouldn't be like 
it shouldn't just be it shouldn't be hard if it's something that you that you want to do like you have to sort of see it in a certain way mm. and maybe recognize that um what we have learned up until now is all kind of a little bit wrong and, and look at look at the damage to the environment um, the slaughter of like innocent animals, the industry, the billions of pounds, the waste, everything, all of that. But it's, it's, until that makes sense in your head and you can sort of grasp it, there's there's no point in uh, no, really no point in trying to be doing it for the doing it for the wrong reason. So the one of the main thing is just like um, I really like to just uh, start looking, start looking into it, what it's all what it's all about. So vegans are known for being quite extreme. So what's the most extreme thing you've done in your life? I tried making sauerkraut once. <laughs> I, pretty extreme. It was pretty, yeah, pretty out there. It didn't, yeah, didn't really work. Um, I don't think I can top that really. <laughs> once battered a Linda McCartney sausage. Yeah. <laughs> What influenced you to become vegan? I went veggie when I was younger because, uh, well, I lived in North Devon. There's like a meat factory that pretty much everyone worked at, and uh, used to like like. Uh, the one reason I remember solidly why the day I went vegetarian was my friend uh, got chronic nosebleeds, and he got it all in the mint, so all in the meat, all his blood everywhere. <gasps> he told the boss, and the boss said, "Just don't tell anyone that happens all the time." So it's like, <laughs> so I I was just like, right, this, and I was only veg, I was still eating like dairy and stuff, and then I realised. In my head, this is my view, I see dairy is worse than meat. Because when you're killing to eat something, the, the dairy side of it is they're just completely giving this animal a life kill, then killing it for meat when it runs out of you know, the juice. Like, so, so I went, yeah, veggie, then just went vegan. It's just like a natural progression. As, as you, once you sort of get your head around that part of it, and you can actually, you know, this, it's actually, in all aspects, I find it wrong and weird, and it's just, it just doesn't work. And then you, you just sort of think about cheese, and then you sort of look into what it actually is. So North Devon, our cheese factory in North Devon used to buy floor scrapings from a factory in Yorkshire. They used to come down and get remelted, all like the grit and hair taken out. My mate would come back with blocks like that from work every week. Oh, hairy cheese. And, well, no, what do we know? They, they filter it back out, so they cook it back down and right. remelt it and reform it into a big block. And, like, and then there's little things like that, but maybe think, but like, even just like the, everything behind it, like, I find dairy it's worse, but it's, it's like a progression, isn't it? You can't just, your head just doesn't suddenly just go, oh, actually, yeah, I want to be vegan. It's, like a bit of a shock to the system if you like, you know, you've, all your life you've thought something completely different and then all of a sudden, but, um, yeah I suppose I was quite lucky to see some absolute filth that our supermarket sell, what I suppose where it was made in Devon, so I was quite lucky really to sell dirty, it was just everything behind it and then, and even at that point I wasn't really thinking so much about the politics and the other sides of it, that was just like one thing I was just like, shocked about. Was, like, Like part of it as well is like sort of taking control of your diet as well and kind of going like right well because I can remember like I used to work at this place and like I think my favorite food was like chicken curry um, and the chef was just like Yo, you're never gonna be like vegetarian so I was just like right but then I, it was that moment where like up until then I'd, I'd eat just like anything it was like refining that and going like no I'm gonna be like conscious of what I'm eating and like you remain conscious and it's quite like a, it be an empowering thing like of being like in control of what you're eating and actually thinking and questioning about it, questioning it, you know what I mean? Um, so there's that element to it as well. Yeah. I think what, what um, there's probably like, in all honesty, like bands that I've listened to um, and also been into punk music mm. and I thought, well, um, you know, I can't like advocate like absolute freedom that I want absolute freedom for myself, yet have a massive population of animals that are imprisoned, whether it be in cages, in fields, or slaughterhouses, whatever. I can't advocate that for for them, and then just sort of start seeing it in a different way, seeing that wow, then. Their lives. Yeah, why would it's weird, that's the thing. It's why would you want thing. to? Why would that? And purely, a lot of it, it's not 
I don't know what selfishness is the right word, but like the, like a lot of people are, I can't give up cheese because the taste or whatever, it's purely because you like the taste, it's purely a self-satisfactory mm. attribute. So it's, I find it quite weird when people say it's like, I can't give up like something or whatever, it's like, it's just so nice, but so it's like putting that on a, like a higher level than the welfare of something that's just gone through hell and then died for you to go, it tastes great, you like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It just like seems a bit like a bit. The palette. It's just a bit like I don't know. Just, I, don't, I don't think there's too much behind it. it doesn't seem like very real to me. It's like well, surely no one really. They're just saying it because they're not really thought about it. It's not they really, really. If you like, if you said right, oh, like I know that little car, lap car fare. We, we get big. We're gonna milk it and chop it up. And you know, I'm sure someone wants to see that. It's not like someone to say, oh, look at it. I don't, that's, I'm sure that's not what they want to happen to it. But it's just because it's all. You just don't see it. You just get packaged little plastic packets of stuff. And, I remember like Fun. just the our bizarre attitudes anyway. Um, someone like uh, that I know a few weeks ago went to like uh, a petting zoo where you pet the nice animals and blah blah, it's all nice. Um, and then straight afterwards, like with the kids, and then straight afterwards took the kids to McDonald's. And that is just like a bizarre example <laughs> yeah, yeah. of like of how we live. Like we've got this like idea of all cute cuddly animals when we when we want it. And then we just go like, oh, McDonald's. No, making no yeah, relationship, no connection, no yeah. connection between yeah, yeah, yeah. those things. Um, and I guess it's because it's kind of we're just disconnected. Uh, everything's there on the shelf. It's easy for us to consume, to buy, we get our money, we swap it for these products. We don't. We hire hitmen to go and like kill them, which are like you know in the slaughterhouses and whatever. We're just disconnected. Do you have any quick tips for people that want to go vegan? So I suppose it's still people have been eating that way for like, a time. I don't know. It's, 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 it's just, just, just being more conscious. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot easier than you think, and there's a lot of like web resources or like cooking cookery books. Um, it's not all lentils and weird yeah. seeds and stuff. Mung there's a, bean, there's though, a yeah. lot. There's a lot of stuff available these days in the supermarket. Everything's labelled. Supermarkets started labelling things. You know, what I mean, it's far easier than what it used to be, and it's not yeah. all like as dull as it was in the 70s when it was like lentils. You know. It's mad when you think that like the Chinese were eating tofu for because that was like people yeah, couldn't tofu. afford meat. Like so, the Chinese like ate tofu and stuff, and that was like a staple diet and stuff.